Good morning, friends. Welcome to Family Story Time. Glad you came back. Let's begin. Are we sitting down? Crisscross applesauce? Did we forget about all those things? Let's turn our listening ears on and let's begin with our hello song. Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job, friends. All righty, today we are going to have a fun story time that ties in with our kits to go. Have you gotten a kit to go yet? If you haven't, you can simply contact the library and you can ask to have a kit to go available for you. They'll schedule a pickup time and you can come and pick up your kit to go. We have them for um, all ages actually. And this week's kit to go for the younger age group is uh, a fairy wand. So you can make your own fairy wand. And this week at the Rawlings location, we have an extra special uh, bag that's within it from, thank you to Southeastern Colorado Area Health Education Center. They provided a little extra goodie for you. There's a toothbrush and a tube of toothpaste. So stop by and pick up your kit to go. And with that, what fairy carries the wand that is the protector of teeth. So we're gonna do tooth fairy and tooth story time today. And I wanted to start off with a little extra special something that we haven't done. So we have Hoopla, a service that we provide that you can um, watch videos, you can read books, you can listen to books. And so today's story we are going to have you watch is called How to Catch a Fairy. Enjoy.
that was a cute story. Are you guys going to try to catch the tooth fairy? I don't know. I was always told you shouldn't try to catch the tooth fairy because then they won't come and visit you. Did you know that other parts of the world don't believe in the tooth fairy? They have different form of a tooth fairy or different things that they do for teeth that they lose. So like in Mongolia, that they bury their teeth next to trees in hopes that their adult teeth would grow in strong like the roots of a tree. Or that in Asia, if they lose a tooth from the top jaw, they throw it up on the roof. If they lose a tooth from the bottom jaw, they throw it down to the floor in hopes that when that new adult tooth grows in, that it will grow in that direction. And then in Spain, Mexico, Peru, and Chile, they have their tooth fairy is called El Raton Perez. And he goes around and collects the teeth just as the tooth fairy does. And he replaces that with um, special gifts or treats for the children. One of my favorite books is called The Tooth Fairy Meets El Raton Perez. So that one is on my book list that I also listed um, in the description. So you can look at that and find some other fun tooth uh, and stories and fairy time stories. All righty, so I want to share my first story with you today, and it's called Alan's Big Scary Teeth. I'd like to thank Candlewick for allowing me to read this, and this is by Jarvis. Alan came from a long line of very scary alligators. He was known throughout the jungle for his scaring. It was what he did best. Alan would start each day, polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing each of his big scary teeth for at least 10 minutes at a time. And after practicing his frightening faces in the mirror, he'd sneak into the jungle for his morning round of scaring. Alan went snap, snap, and grr, grr. He said things like, I'm Big Scary Alan. Fear my razor sharp teeth. He made the frogs leap off of their lily pads, the monkeys tumble from the trees, and the parrots screech in terrible terror. Snap, snap. Grrr. Eek! Ah! <laughs> I love being scary, said Alan. After a long day of scaring the jungle anim animals, Alan would head back home to the swamp, relax, finish the crossword in the Jungle Times, and take out his false teeth. Nobody knew about Alan's false teeth. Good night, teeth. Sweet dreams, my scary snappers, Alan would say as he put them away carefully in his super secret hiding spot. One morning, Barry the beaver was up early collecting wood and he came across a dozing Alan. Terrified that Alan might wake up and gobble him whole, he quickly dove behind a bush. Phew, that was close, thought Barry, just as a set of false teeth fell out of the bush with a very familiar snap, snap. When Alan awoke, his teeth were gone. My teeth, my teeth, wow, well, my teeth. What could he do? Maybe no one would notice. Could he still be scary without them? He decided to head into the jungle as usual. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads. The monkeys tumble from the trees and the parrots screech. With laughter, <gasps> Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Snap, snap, he said. Ha, <laughs> laughed the frogs and monkeys. Alan slunk back to the swamp. Poor Alan. He had never been more embarrassed. He came from a long line of very scary alligators. Scaring was all he had known how to do. What would Alan do now? Poor Alan began to cry, just a bit at first. But then the tears kept coming. He howled and yowled more than all the jungle babies put together. And he could not stop crying. 
until the next morning when all the animals turned up at Alan's swamp with his big scary teeth. We'll give you back your teeth, said Frog. Will we, said Alan. On one condition, said Parrot. You have to stop scaring us. But what will I do? I don't know how to do anything else. But we have an idea, said Frog. And so every day after polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing his teeth, his big scary teeth, Alan headed into the jungle. And he became Alan the gardener, Alan the hairdresser, and Alan the dentist. But every night he became Alan the big scary storyteller thrilling the jungle animals with his terrifying tales. Blah! <laughs> I love being scary, said Alan. And sometimes he even let Barry borrow his teeth. Grrr, says Barry. The end. That's a funny little story. I like that one. All right, I want to share one last story with you and let's see if you can use your guessing skills. This is a story called Book O' Teeth, and I'd like to thank Capstone Publishing for this one. And this one I'm going to read to you and then hold it up and see if you can guess who I am. So these pointy teeth come out in the night, but when the day breaks, ah, sunlight, I am a vampire. You got it. These two things will make any damn good. Big, sharp teeth and wood, wood, wood. <gasps> right, a beaver. This wolfish grin shines bright in moonlight. Don't be a beast. Ask, please, just one bite. Can you tell what I am? <gasps> A werewolf! They click and clack and chatter like bone. Hold up these teeth and let out a groan. Mm, I'm a skeleton! Wear these teeth and watch beachgoers flee. Let them know that you're king of the sea. Dun dun. I'm a shark. Yes. This monster mouth doesn't fuss or complain. It simply drools and says only brains. Right, a zombie. Very good. Looks like he needs to go to the dentist, doesn't he? With all those ucky teeth. Some of these would make great masks for you to wear when you go out in public, right? All right, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Let's finish off with our farewell song. And here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Bye, friends. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful, safe week. And don't forget to stop by the library and pick up your kit to go. We'll see you next week. Bye.